That's how we do it. That's how we're going to do every one, no matter if it's a straightforward question or an advanced question. In fact, this mirrors exactly how the test makers write the question. For example, we'd like to take someone at random, Hannah. Let's say that Hannah works for ETS and writes questions for the GRE. And Hannah says, I want to test these future graduate students by giving them vocabulary and context, see if they can understand what the sentences mean and use the appropriate word to fill that meaning. So Hannah has to write a sentence that has specific clue words that lead to one and only one meaning for the blank. And then Hannah's going to put one of the words that fits the meaning and give a bunch of other words that don't. And that's how they write the question. Notice that our approach to solving these questions mirrors the test maker's approach to writing them exactly. So we're taking control. We have power over them. Will there be difficult questions? Of course. Will there be difficult vocabulary? Of course. But we always have the approach to handle it. And we'll just keep building our skills and confidence as we go. Let's check in. Give me a yes in the chat box if you feel like I can do this. This might be new. This is something I, I can I can practice this. I can make this happen. So far, Cesare, and that's good enough for us. We'll take that. Awesome. Let's do another one together. Here's page 30, question two. Having test driven this car in a variety of realistic conditions and found its performance lackluster at best, I have to say that its maker's sanguine claims are lack. Step one, tell us in the chat, what are the clue words? What are the clue words? David, Viet, Rebecca are all saying lackluster. And let's even extend that, not just lackluster, but lackluster at best. And then people are also saying sanguine. David says sanguine, Victoria says sanguine. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So there are sanguine claims and there's performance that is lackluster at best. Now it's important, one of our advanced strategies is really to figure out whose point of view is talking. So tell us in the chat, who thinks the performance is lackluster at best, the test driver or the car maker? Michelle says the person who drove the car, excellent. So that's whose point of view, that's the I here. I have to say, so the I is the person who found it lackluster at best. Now we're ready to predict. I have to say that its maker sanguine claims are what? Step two, predict the meaning of the blank. False, false, false. <laughs> Gabriella says lies, all lies. <laughs> I love it. Many people are saying false, that's a perfect prediction. I'm gonna write it on the screen and we'll take the answer cover off. Go ahead and answer in the poll. Which answer choice matches false? Trust your predictions. Trust yourself. Trust your predictions. And let's broadcast the results. The vast majority of us say unfounded, and that is exactly correct. Something that is false is unfounded. Step four of the method, let's read it back in to make sure it makes sense. I mean, test driven this car in a variety of realistic conditions and found its performance lackluster at best. I have to say, that its maker's sanguine claims are unfounded. Fantastic job, do it like that every time. Now let's add another strategy here. Notice that when I read it out loud, I read it in an exaggerated voice. If we read the text completions like this, having test driven this car in a variety of realistic conditions and found its performance lackluster or better than that, it's hard to squeeze the meaning out of the sentences. Let's face it, many of us feel that taking the GRE has this dronish drudgery to it. Another question, blah, 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 blah. So what Joseph and I wanna share with you is to read every question in an exaggerated voice. Whether it's in your mind on test day or out loud as you're practicing. I like to use Jerry Seinfeld simply because I'm a fan, but it works. 
find the voice that works for you, but notice how we pull out the meaning. Having test driven this car in a variety of realistic conditions and found its performance lackluster at best, I have to say that its maker's sanguine claims are unfounded. We are squeezing, sucking the meaning out of this sentence in a way that a dronish reading will simply not do. So always read in an exaggerated fashion to pull that meaning out of the sentence.